as well. Don't start a business because you need money right now. I've been feeling that in my spirit this whole year for people, entrepreneurs who, who need money and now all of a sudden they want to start a business. That's a bad place to be. Like, don't start a business because you need money. Start a business because now you're ready to do what God has told you to do. Don't start a business because your rent is due and now you want to pay your rent without working on your nine to five. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Wealth and Christ Show, a show where we inspire the masses to become financially free while building God's kingdom. On the show today, we have Miss Trianta Gray. Did I say that correctly? Triante. Triante Gray. We have Miss Triante Gray. Miss Triante Gray is a successful Christian entrepreneur who owns and operates a six figure t shirt brand called Mayua Collection. Mayua Collection. Um, in this episode, we discuss Miss Miss Trianta entrepreneurship journey so far and how she teach others to start a successful teacher business i apologize for butchering your name you're fine you're fine um, um, how are you doing i am doing amazing thank you for asking how are you i'm doing well i'm doing well uh to get started in this conversation i want to ask you know how did you get started in this teacher business you know what led you to one to become an entrepreneur well, that's a good question. So when I started, so I first want to tell you Moeya Collection was the very first business that I launched um, in 2020, uh, 2020. Um, and so um, that was the first business that I launched. I have multiple businesses um, outside of that being a business, but I basically started a business in the midst of the pandemic. Um, I had just had my son and I literally just followed the voice of the Lord. He told me to start a business and I kind of fasted and prayed and seek confirmation time and time and time again. Um, and I eventually got down to my last $7.17. I invested it to buy a blank t-shirt and some vinyl and turned it into a multi-million dollar brand. That's that's really great. And I want to, you know, um, kind of go back a little bit. I know reading your biography, it's mentioned that you experienced being in a coma. You heard God's voice while you was in a coma. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. I wanted to talk about that. Like, you know, how did that experience of you being in a coma and hearing God's voice shape your perspective on life and business? Wow, man, I haven't had an interview on that experience in a while. So I got a lot to say in a sense, but I'll make sure that it's short. So in 2012, I experienced a car accident and it left me uh, in a coma. I died on the scene and I was just in an eight day coma. Um, so basically during that time, I experienced different things that I've never been able to experience before, had some encounters that um, that's very spiritual and in-person encounters with the Lord and, and angels being presented to me. And it was breathtaking. I literally was able to see myself outside of myself. Um, I was able to see my dad who stood at the left side of my bed. The Lord actually presented an angel to the right side of my head, the right side of my bed, at the head of my bed. She looked to be about seven or eight years old. It was a little girl. She had short curly hair that kind of came to about right here. She had a white robe on and she just held a candle. She didn't really have any wings. It was just like a nice little girl that sat at the head of my bed. And she was there on the third day of my coma. The first two days I was in a coma, the Lord didn't say anything to me. That was the first encounter that I had was with the with an angel that he presented to me. And then after that, I was able to see my father who stood to the left side of my bed and how angry he was and scared that he was. And I just remember saying a prayer to the Lord and saying, could you just let my father know that I'm okay? Um, ease up the pain that he may have been feeling. And my dad said that the next day he was able to get up and go to work. Um, he had just got hired on the job, so he couldn't miss that many days. And so he was able to get up and go to work. And the fourth day came and the Lord presented to me. Um, and I only could see like from the shoulders up. And it was a gentleman. Um, and he was, it looks like he had stopped at the barbershop in heaven and got an edge up. Like he had a really nice edge up and he was real clothed. It kind of looked like he had a, a 
a suit jacket on and he just kind of floated up to me and I can just see his shoulders and up. And when he came, his face became clear to me. And it was my grandfather who passed away. I think when I was like really young, once, you know, like first, second grade, somewhere a long, ten, a long time ago, I don't know what year he passed away, but my grandfather presented himself to me and um, he didn't say anything. He just let me feel, he didn't say anything, but he let me feel like everything was gonna be okay. And he floated away and then I had some really powerful encounters with the Lord. I actually came out of myself and I was looking at myself and the and Jesus came down and he had this white robe on. But do you know like a painter? Like if you're going to like painting with a twist and you're painting something on a canvas. Yeah. He literally was at the foot of my bed and he had a canvas in front of him. And he was just kind of like peeking over the canvas and just looking at me lay down and he was peeking and he would go back and he would peek again. And I was like, what are you doing? And he says, I'm rewriting, I'm rewriting your life. Mm. And he literally just rewritten my life right then and there. And um, pretty much, you know, I had to forgive myself for some sins, confess some sins that I've done. And he just rewrote my life. And I remember the eighth day of the coma, that's when they had tried to bring me back, but I couldn't come back. I didn't make it the first two times. So they tried to bring me back the third time. They had already had my family prepared for my death. They were, um, insurances was already there. They had documentations that my parents were waiting to sign just because of the brain trauma that I had. I wasn't prepared to come back. If I did come back, I would be like a vegetable. Um, so they kind of was going through that process and they reeled me out of one of the rooms that I was in because my intestines had locked up. So I hadn't had like a bowel movement in a while. So they were preparing me to go to surgery. And on the way to surgery, I had a, a bowel movement. So they took me back in the room and they tried to take me off of the life support. And they called in the brain doctors because they knew that once they took me off that I was probably gonna have to reel me into surgery because I had bleeding in the brain in four different areas. So when they were taking me off life support, my dad was in there, my mom was in there, and all the surgeons was in there, and they pulled the tube out of my throat, and when they were pulling the tube out of my throat, my dad stood on the right side of my bed, and they were counting my breaths, and I took, I took nine deep breaths, and I opened up my eyes, and I looked at my dad, and I said, amen. Wow. That was my journey. <laughs> wow, that, 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 wow, that is definitely a testimony um by itself and i want to ask you know you know what was your fate like you know with god with christ you know before you got into accident um and you know and just going through that and explaining like what was it like after like you know what did you do different in terms of like you know being committed and being more faithful if you can go into details okay so before i had the car accident i stayed in a homeless shelter. So I was living in a homeless shelter and I was actually attending church. So I was in church. I knew who God was. I love the Lord. I've been a Christian of my entire life. Um, to be honest, I was the very first active Christian or had a relationship with the Lord growing up in my household. My family didn't turn fully into Christ until after I woke up from a coma. So every Sunday it was me going to church. It was never my dad, my mom, my brothers. I was just in church. I was mom dancing, praise dancing. So my life journey up until the accident was, I knew who he was. I wasn't perfect, just like we're all night. So, but I was actually inside of a church service eight hours before my car accident. I had attended a revival and I had just met, <laughs> I had, I was at a revival and I remember, I don't remember, but I remember because I had notifications on my phone. So I attended this revival at a church, Gospel Tabernacle. And I remember the pastor saying, sow a seed of $36 uh, to plant a seed in the ground for $36 or whatever the case may be. So I planted a seed for myself and I planted a seed for a friend of mine. Right after the service, this is about to really blow your mind. Right after the service, I was in such of a spiritual high to where we were attending the movies. So we pulled up to the movie theaters. 
All of my friends got out. We were going to the movies. I bought a ticket, went into the movie theater, sat down, and asked for the keys so that I could go back and sit in the car. Ask me why I did that. Because I couldn't jump out of it. Because I was in such of a spiritual high, I couldn't get out of it. And so I asked my friend for the keys to go sit back in her car. I sat in the back seat on the passenger side. I called my mom and I was like, she's an RN. She worked at nighttime. And I was like, mom, do you know why God has made me so different? And you don't understand me and people don't understand me. It's because I'm different and God made me different. And she said, okay, I understand. Can I call you back? I'm busy on the floor. And eight hours later, I had a car accident and I died. And I was in an eight day coma right after that. So eight hours before the car accident, I was in church. And eight hours after the car accident, I was um, in, a, in a coma. But my parents would have never even knew what happened to me. They would have never even known because about three days before church, I had just met a guy. He was my boyfriend at the time. Nobody knew him. So I had told him, you hadn't met my parents yet. So here is my best friend's number. Just in case anything ever happens to me, you will have somebody to contact. So he was able to contact my best friend who knew my mom and dad, and that's how they knew. So at the hospital for a long time, I was just a John Doe until my parents arrived who lived about two and a half hours away. Wow, 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 uh, wow. That... <laughs> Wow, that's that's wow. Yeah. That's a testimony. I'm just thinking here, like how would I have handled all of that? You know, that's that's um. But thank God, you know, definitely, um, thank God for your life, you know, and keeping you alive, you know, for us to talk about it. You know, we can speak about it now, um, and for those who are listening, just to be encouraged that you know God still has a plan for them, um, as long as they're living. So I definitely appreciate you, um, sharing that. And I want to wow. kind of like, so how did you go from there? Like, you know, coming out, rehabbing um, to now, like starting that business, you know, starting that first business um, where you got down to $7.17. So from the day that I woke up in a coma, the Lord told me to write a book. So I literally was blind in my left eye for like 19 days. Um, the spirit of the Lord just lived in the, in the room that I was in. So I remember telling my mom, the Lord told me to write a book. So she would just write as I was telling her what to say. And so I was presented with a lot of angels, just being in the presence of the Lord. I didn't physically say a word other than amen for the first two days after I woke up. So if the nurses came in, they were like, how are you doing? I'd like, amen. So I didn't physically like talk until two days afterwards. And I kind of transitioned. I actually went back to the homeless shelter, stayed there um, for about another 10 or 11 months, transitioning outside of there, you know, lived life um, and then had a baby a couple of years after that. And that's when I got down to being obedient with the Lord and not running. You know, I know that I was already called. I've been called and I just wanted to kind of fully submit myself and finally do something that God was telling me to do outside of me doing something that I felt like would make my parents proud of me or my mom was a nurse. So I went to nursing school, you know, so I kind of got to that point at the age of like 28, 29. And I was like, I'm going to do what I know that God is telling me to do. And after I had my son and I heard the Lord so clearly to start a t-shirt business and that I was called to to not necessarily extend the life of people, but I had a special anointing up on my life to birth and to bring life to, um, like the essence of life, meaning the power to be able to sustain like elders, to give them activities to do, to have a long life. And so it kind of got down to uh, me just taking that leap of faith and understanding that this is all that I have. After I had just had a son, and I fasted and prayed and I continued to hear confirmation after confirmation from the Lord. And I just got down to the last $7.17 and I was like, okay, I'm going to do what you're calling me to do. I built a business. I didn't have a coach. I don't have a coach currently now. I tell my students and people that I talk to, the Holy Ghost is my director. Uh, he tells me what color to drop. He tells me what to put on a t-shirt. 
and he just directed me through the process and I'm getting a little emotional because it's just, it literally changed my life in such of a way. Um, and it's not just financially, it's just having the fulfillment and which I encourage also the listeners who's listening to understand that money is not all that you need. And I understood that after dying and coming back, that God had more and better for me. And he just wanted me to trust him with a little bit so that he can give me a lot. And he gave me so much more than I've ever had in my entire life within the last three years of me starting a business. So it helped me actually build the ministry that I have. And T-shirts is just a tool to spread the gospel. I like that. T-shirts is just a tool to spread the gospel. Um, but yeah. one thing that, you know, um, I want to ask, because you did mention that, you know, uh, before the accident, you was the only one going to church. Um, you know, mm -hmm. being active in church and your family was not into it. And to hear that, you know, after the whole incident, you had to go back to the shelter, you know, um, and just go through that whole process. I was, I'm curious to know, what was the relationship like between your parents and family um, during that time for you to have to like? During that time, my relationship with my parents wasn't the best. You know, I was a uh, rebellious type of teenager. I ran away my entire teenager life. I sold drugs. Um, I actually sold drugs out of my mom's mailbox um, when I lived there. So I was literally like a rebellious. I'll go to the club on Saturday, but I'll be in church on Sunday. You know, like I literally was living the life and trying to identify. I really struggled growing up with not necessarily fitting in because I was very popular, but I struggled with, you know, the black and white and understanding Christianity and not feeling like I can't have fun being a Christian and I can't go out. So I literally kind of struggled. So we really had like a really rough relationship once we got um, my, from like the age 16 up until probably like 20, after my car accident when I was about 20, uh, my mid twenties. So for a good, like eight or 10 years, it was really, 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 really rough. And so after they experienced that situation with me being in a coma, you know, they, you know, we done us some apologizing and we kind of forgave each other for some things. And now we have the best relationship that we've ever had um, in my entire life. Like they're my best friends and uh, the same house that I sold drugs out of the mailbox. I actually paid their house off in cash last year on Labor Day. Um, so God is definitely amazing. That That is amazing. Um, and I want to like, you know, ask, you know, what would you say to someone, you know, the viewers, the watchers, you know, who may have been experiencing what you were experiencing at 16, you know, feel like they just, they don't know, like they, they want to be a Christian, you know, they're going through a back and forth, like, or oh, like, you know, I can't have fun. Um, you know, they want to make their parents proud. Um, like they have all these things coming at them. You know, what would you say yeah. to that person? So if I could say to any viewers who's listening and even to my 16 self, it would be to take the pressure off of yourself. I feel like being a Christian and back in the day, it was so much pressure to be perfect and understanding that perfection does not make you a Christian, but just knowing who God is and that he died for your sins and he's a Lord and savior. If you confess your sins, that you will be forgiven is just good enough. Um, you know, it's not all that you need, but that's just good enough to give you a peace of mind. And I just feel like at the age of 16, especially because it's so young in today's society, teenagers ain't really, you know, rocking with Jesus like that. Like, you know, that's more so of a, not a shameful thing, but it's not a boastful, proudful thing. Like we literally talk about God being older in life, but being really, really young, if you weren't grew up in church and, you know, for the people who, and I just feel the Holy Ghost dealing with me with this, if you don't mind, I hear the Lord saying, um, there are some people who are watching and who may watch this video. You weren't grew up, you didn't grow up in church, but you know, you rec recognize at a young age that you had a calling up on your life. So you battled with the familiar of people don't look like you, they don't sound like you, people don't understand you. So I just encourage you who's listening to understand that you can continue to still be your unique, your unique full self and still be able to have fun 
take some pressure off of you and just know that God ain't going to put more on you right now at the age that you're in that you can't bear. You have a life to live. You have a journey to be able to live in. Life is beautiful. It's designed for us to enjoy it. Don't fear, don't, don't cut out your youthful days by feeling like you got to cut some people out of your life, which, you know, you have to do that, but don't cut off the, the youthfulness in your life, feeling as though you have to hurry up with time because life is, is meant to be enjoyable. And I think that's what I would tell someone um, who's listening. No, you're hundred percent right. You know, especially as a young adult myself, you know, a lot of people younger than me, even my age are shying away from the church, shying away from talking about Christianity for many different reasons. Um, and it's, you know, it's scary, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's just a reality um, that we just have to come in terms with. And I think, you know, for those who are listening, should definitely go um, just, you know, literally seek God for themselves, you know, and get to know him because, you know, life, you know, life can be taken away from you as quick as possible. You're here today and you're going tomorrow. Um, yeah. And I want to kind of, you know, get back into this conversation of you building this multi multi business um uh, cuz you say that you know you use this t-shirt actually the first question I want to ask you say you don't have a you don't have a coach um you don't have no coach and what I wanted to ask you know being that you have no coach and the holy spirit is your coach um how would you suggest someone who's getting started you know in this christian apparel world um this christian industry to go about it I mean, in fact, when you started, you didn't have a coach, you know, would you recommend them getting a coach like you? You know, what, what, um, what is your thoughts on that? So what I would say, particularly to faith-based um, people who are wanting to start a business or the Christian um, society, I'm a person, right? But I can't coach you better than the Holy Ghost can coach you. I can't coach you better than a revelation that God may give you. I can give you the business side of how to start up a business, like how to make your design, how to print your t-shirts, how to create your website. But as far as what to put on a t-shirt, as far as your purpose, who you're designed to help, what you're designed to be able to supply to those people that you're de designed to be able to help. I can't give you that. I can, the Holy Ghost is my coach. And when I say that he, I, because I said yes to him, and this is my ministry, he tells me what to put on a shirt. He tells me what color to put the shirt on. I I had to learn how to build the business. And now I do recommend because I had to do it myself that you need to have somebody that can teach you the business. Because what I realized as I got into the field of coaching, a lot of people like yourself or even like myself or people who's listening, they already have a word. And you need to understand that there are people who you may look up to like Beyonce, Jay-Z or whoever They'll start a business and then start it, spend all the money and then seek for a word to ask God. Now, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? So never degrade yourself to know that God is telling you to start a business. That's the first thing. The Bible tells us faith without works is dead. And so God will order your steps. So if God has spoken to you and told you to start a business, I can help you build what he's told you. But if you just trying to chase money, if you're just trying to do something just to do it. And that's what's so different about me and what I coach and what I teach and my t-shirt course within itself. I can't help you do what God is telling you to do. I can only give you what God is, what I can only give you what you need to carry it. And I believe if you allow me to say this, the Lord spoke this to me when I started the business, because I started the business. Like I said, I don't, didn't have a coach. It was just the Holy, Holy ghost. Now that I'm in multi-million dollars, I have to have a coach now. It just makes sense because I don't know everything. So business-wise, I need a coach, a mentor. But whenever I launch my business, and I'm going to share this with you because hopefully some listeners can understand this. The Lord told me to start a business. I launched it. Didn't tell anybody, just like you were watching right now, God has told you to do it and you haven't done it because you're afraid somebody's going to take your design, steal your logo. So I launched it and I made zero dollars. I made zero dollars after spending my last seven dollars and 17 cents. So I was immediately saying to the Lord, now you told me to start this business. I thought that I was fixing to be rich. I thought that I can call up Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey and tell him I'm on my way. I thought this was <laughs> it because I'm finally doing something that I know you're telling me to do. I thought that's all that it took. 
The Holy Spirit then told me, you have a word, but you don't have the skills to carry what I have given you. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people abort their missions, abort their purposes, abort their tasks, because you have a word, but you don't have the proper equipment, the tools to carry it. So I teach people how to carry the word in which God has told them to do when it comes to t-shirts. I like that. I I, 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 I definitely like that. Um, I'm a big advocate on getting mentors, Um, you know. Cause like you said, God will give you a word, you know, God will um give you vision, but at the same time, you know, he will also send people towards you who can guide you. You know, you look at Paul versus Timothy, you know, Paul mentored Timothy into the man that he he became. You look at Paul, he was also mentored by the disciples. Different ways that there's mentorship in the Bible, you know, they had this word that, you know, God's gonna make them great, but yet they still suck mentorship. And I feel like it's important. And being that said, I want to ask, you know, what are some key factors that would you say contribute to a Christian in power being successful? Some key factors I would say is to first things first, please don't look at it as financial growth. Let that be something that that's not, you won't be successful if you're coming into it, especially with the umbrella of Christianity and faith based, we're already looked upon in a different way. So never look at it as selling to make money. Look at it as though you're providing somebody a solution to their problem. That's the hugest solution. It can help you with the marketing. It can help you with content that you create because you're no longer selling a product like this chapstick. You know, I'm, I can't sell this. I'm now providing a solution to a problem. So when you are opening up your Christian or faith-based business, when it comes to t-shirts, what you put on your shirt should solve somebody's problem, not, oh, let me sell this many shirts so I can make money. So if you dealt with abandonment issues growing up and you now feel like a lot of people are drawn to you because they dealt with abandonment issues Put something in regards to abandonment issues on the t-shirt because it'll help you attract the right audience and it'll give you, it'll make it easier for you to promote it because you're not doing things to make money. You're doing things just like you're doing now. You're doing things because this is what you're called to do. You know how to do it, to create a platform to talk about what we're talking about. So that's the same way it has to go in, in your business. That's a key factor. A lot of people ask me, what's your key how can, what's the way to market my business? I'm not making sales. The first thing that I tell them is, who is your target audience? There is no one way to make sales. Create something that you are comfortable with sharing your story. Because the Bible tells us, Revelations 12 and 11, we overcome by the words of our testimonies and the blood of the lamb. So even in your t-shirt business, if you can tell your testimony, God can blow on it. You can overcome poverty or whatever state that you're in. So, yes, that's a key factor is not think about money. Know that money belongs to you as long as you put in the work. And the second thing is be yourself. Don't put something on a T-shirt that you're not ready to talk about. If you're still dealing with abandonment issues and you and it still is a, a, a flag to you when you hear about it, then you're not. it's not time for you to share. So share something about your life that other, because truth be told, the people that you're called to serve are the people that's right around you. You just have to open up your mouth so they can know that there are people that look just like me. There are people who've gone through what I've gone through, and now we can get through things together, and we can help other people get through them as well. So everybody that you need literally is right in front of you. You just have to open up your mouth to let them know that you're there. That's very true. And, you know, I want to ask, yeah. you know, from... You know, going broke, you know, from spending your last seventeen, $7.17 and not seeing any significant change and like in questioning God, like, you know, what were the steps that you took to start getting the ball rolling and start to see profits rolling in? So the first thing I did was I left my house. I literally took my son with my mom and we got in the car and we went away because I was like, I couldn't even stay in the house because I was like, now, Lord, you told me to do that. You told me to start this business, and I feel like if it, it failed. So when I left the house, that's when the Lord said, you need to understand marketing. You need to understand how to carry it, what I've given you. So I built a marketing strategy. 
I came up with some tips. I utilized social media. I talked about my brand versus keeping it a secret. And before you know it, in 14 days, I made $8,530.03. And after launching my business, I made over $8,500 in 14 days. And it just kept flowing. It kept flowing and kept flowing from there. So I built a marketing strategy behind it. Hey, would you mind, um, could you go into detail like a little bit about the marketing strategy and for those who may be listening and watching, they can apply? So, yeah, so the marketing strategy would be first to um, identify your target audience, figure out who you're selling to and what you're selling them would be the second thing. You can't say that you're selling these for everybody. You're selling them for a group of people, which is hundreds and thousands and millions of people. So identify your target audience. Then identify what you're comfortable with sharing and providing to them, to your target audience. Utilize social media. If you don't want to be on social media, we're in 2023, then e-commerce world is not for you. Don't waste your money going to these classes and these courses. If you don't want to show your face on camera, if you don't want to go on live, if you don't want to do videos, social media, that business is not just going to, don't waste your time. I'm not going to tell you no other lie. You don't want to do that it's not fit for you to do i'm telling you um and just keep going be consistent you're gonna have good days high days every business starts from the ground up and i want to say that again to those who are listening every business starts from the ground up i feel like a lot of people who look at entrepreneurs like ourselves they already see dollar signs and not even realizing that we have to start from the ground up just like anything else so don't count yourself don't discredit yourself because you're starting from the ground up because that's how you start. You yeah. can't start from the top and get there. So just get started. The hardest part is to get started. Get started and realize nothing is free. Invest in the knowledge that you feel like you need to grow your business and launch it. That's great. And I want to ask you, know, because you uh, mentioned a lot in this in this conversation so far about not getting caught up in the money. Um, you know, and you mentioned that um, in 14 days, you know, once you moved out, you made $8,000 um, to now where we are currently, you know, having a multi-million dollar business. You know, how were you able to continue to keep that uh, mindset and not get caught up, you know, and just feel like you're you're her now, yeah. um, you know, as people mm-hmm. like to say, uh, and not get caught up in that. I would say because when I, uh, I would honestly say, and I'm glad you asked that question and I hope that you guys can hear me with this because I never went in it looking for money. It was never hard for me to be attached to the money. A lot of people go into it saying, oh, I'm fixing to be rich. Oh, I'm fixing to buy a house. Oh, I'm about to buy a car. I never looked at the business going into it by how successful that I can be because truth be told, I did not know that you can make this much money in the t-shirt industry. I didn't know, didn't believe it. Didn't I didn't I don't have nobody in my circle around me that has done what I've done. So I didn't even know that people can really be successful as I am and even more successful than me in the industry. So that's the key factor. I never looked at it of how much money I can make. I look I didn't know you can make this much money to be honest. I all I wanted to do is pay my bills, which was $2,100 a month. I literally took a picture of my whiteboard and it said $2,100 a month. That's all I wanted to make, to pay my bills and to make sure that my son had diapers. I was breastfeeding him at the time, so it was okay. If I didn't have to worry about food. So that's all that I wanted to make was $2,100 a month to pay my bills. I kid you not. I never knew you could be successful. So now that I'm a millionaire, it doesn't bother me with the money because I never looked at money being an issue. So that's why I coach and I teach the way that I am, because if you go into it looking for money, you're going to get burnt out because you're going to find yourself chasing money versus chasing and staying in alignment with your purpose. If you go in and looking at how much money you can make, then you're going to get burnt out. It's like chasing a dollar. Before you get to the dollar, you get tired before you get there. And that's why so many entrepreneurs and particularly faith-based entrepreneurs, because we say that we hear the Lord, we can get so close to the promise of money that chasing money, we get tired right before we get there. And now all of a sudden 
we hear the Lord telling us to start another business. Oh, the Lord is now, since I haven't seen so much success in money and t-shirts, now I hear the Lord saying, start a candle business right before, without you even knowing that you was right to the money, right to the promise of, of the wealth of it. But now all of a sudden you hear the Lord saying, start a candle business because you chase money and you got tired. I believe that's what the Lord will do. He'll make you tired before you even get to it because you're doing it the wrong way. So that's why I teach inside of my course, the first module is brand name, and that's attached to your testimony. So starting the foundation of a t-shirt business is very important. So keeping you in alignment with your purpose, not money. You're going to make money, though. Make sure you pay tithes, but you'll make money. I promise you. You are. No, I, I made I, a lot I, of money. <laughs> I have made a lot of money in t-shirts, but I've, I've been a great steward. I paid my tithes, paid my parents' house off, got a house and all that good stuff. But money comes, money goes. And and I want to say this before you ask your next question, if you had a question. The Lord gave me this word, and I can feel him bringing this back to me for those people who are listening. So many people pray for money, even in business and in life. And you get so caught up in praying for a financial breakthrough, praying for God to pay a bill after a bill after a bill. And the Lord says, you, you lack the understanding for the need of money. I'm not giving you money to pay bills. Just go get a go get a job to pay your bills. But the, the type of money that I have sustained for believers who are doing what I've called them to do is for an assignment. A lot of people pray for money but they neglect the assignment and wonder why God ain't gave them the money. He's only going to release the assignment money when you say yes to the assignment. So me saying yes to the assignment that God had placed upon my life for my ministry and for my t-shirts, he released the financial burden that I would ha wouldn't have to go through to be able to stay in my assignment. A lot of preachers, pastors, ministers build up churches and things and that such, but the financial burden of trying to walk in the assignment can allow them to throw in the towel too soon. So when you allow the Lord to not, when you allow yourself, because God knows our heart to take away the need of money and just do it just because I also want to say this as well. Don't start a business because you need money right now. I've been feeling that in my spirit this whole year for people, entrepreneurs who, who need money. And now all of a sudden they want to start a business. That's a bad place to be. Like, don't start a business because you need money. Start a business because now you're ready to do what God has told you to do. Don't start a business because your rent is due and now you want to pay your rent without working on your nine to five. That's a, that's a bad window. So it's very important. And I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying, especially for faith-based Christians, believers, and any entrepreneurs. But because we're talking about faith-based who are being led by the Lord, don't start your business because you need money. Start your business because you're doing what God has called and told you to do. Hey, family, I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. And if you are and you have yet to subscribe to us here on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. And also, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts and you have yet to leave us a five-star review, please do so. Now back to the episode. Yeah, you're 100% right on that. Um, and I feel like it kind of reminds me of 2020. Um, you know, a lot of people started, got into this journey of entrepreneurship, you know, a lot of things was going on, crypto or real estate, everything people can touch was like, it was a goal, like, and now you're seeing, you're looking at different reports, you're looking at different statistics, and just going back to what you said, a lot of people did this without no sense of direction from God, mm -hmm. no um sense of purpose there was like there's a lot of things missing and as a result you know a lot of people regret a lot of people are saying oh why you why you made me go through this not realizing that they were not listening they were not you know going back to the source you know and asking is this what you called me for and a lot of people quit and i've seen a lot of people start different things and it's like wait you quit yeah mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. it's confusing because like there was very at least they were passionate about it. like, you know, they was going strong. And, you know, in some cases I was getting inspired by, okay, this is, I got to keep on going, but it's just like, wait, what happened? Um, So I just, I think I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, God didn't call you to business. God didn't call you to entrepreneurship. You know, it's not for everyone. Um, You know, there's different ways you can bless God. God can use in so many different ways, you know, in your, in your nine to five, you know, 
and just bless mm -hmm. you in that in that aspect. You know, there's a calling for certain people to work nine to five. There's also a call for people to work business, and there's certain calling for people to preach. There's all these different calling. You just gotta find out, you know, what God is calling you to do. Um, which leads to my next question. Um, uh, I feel like Christian based they faces a lot, you know, because of we're trying to compete um with other people. I want to ask ask it like this, you know, how do you go about I know you mentioned the Holy Spirit is your clothes, but how do you go about designing um your clothes and you know and what are some what was the best design and clothes you have? Because I can feel like as Christians, we get caught up in trying to compete with the fashion overs, the the pinks, uh whatever the biggest brands out there, uh, because you know you want to make that money, you know, going back to that money, chasing that money, you know, because you realize like, no one wants to wear a Jesus Christ shirt or anything. So what mm -hmm. are ways that, you know, people can be creative and not get caught up in that? Wow. Now that is a good, good question. And my simple answer to that is simple, clear, yet powerful. Simple statements. Make sure that it's clear, yet powerful. It don't have to say Jesus. It don't have to say hallelujah. That's why it's very important to identify and be comfortable with writing out your testimony. Because truth be told, the same testimony that I've shared with you at the beginning of this call, the t-shirt the statement, once I wrote it down, that came out of that was, it's my turn now. And that was the multi-million dollar brand that I launched two years ago. So simple statements, clear, powerful, stay away from the cursive fonts. Just be a simple, bold statement like what you're wearing right now. Simple, clear, yet powerful statement. There's no competition. Just be you and also be authentically you. Instead of you putting Jesus loves me on a t-shirt, maybe say something like um, sinner, but he saved me, sinner, but he raised me, sinner, but I, sinner, but he forgave me. People don't, if you are not afraid to be authentic and, and, and take a layer off of what sounds so cute and be authentically you, that's, that's how you're going to stand out. And it's, it's not about competing with people. It's about standing out. So how can I stand out com compared to Fashion Nova? How can you stand out compared to Fashion Nova is? Be simple, clear, yet Fashion Nova got too much stuff going on. Ain't nobody walking around here with no five, six, seven different color t-shirts and um, graphics on their shirts no more. Be just be a simple, clear, yet powerful statement and, and roll. Just be like Nike. Nike is simple, clear, yet powerful. The same statement, they'll change the, the Nike sign on Valentine's Day. They may put some uh, hearts inside of it. On uh, St. Patrick's Day, they may put some foley clovers inside of it. Just a simple, clear, yet powerful statement and, and milk it. Once you find something that works, build a brand, get your trademark, your LLC, protect yourself, and just build it just like Nike. Start with t-shirts, then get crew necks, then get some socks, get some bags, get some hats some joggers and just build the whole brand. I like that. Simple statement. I like that. And a question I have, you know, just I remember you mentioned that, you know, the seven the seven dollar and seventeen cents, you bought a blank, your blank shirt. Um, do you recommend people to go where they build it in it from scratch, you know, where they get in the shirt, the sweaters, you know, filling out compared to going the the drop ship method where Shopify has it for you completely and just copying a logo like which way would you recommend and from your experience which way is better so from my experience which way is better is printing on demand in-house which means you do the work you buy the shirts you create it because if I, I wouldn't have done it myself I wouldn't have had the content to post on social media so if and if you don't have the content to post on social media the only way for you to really make money would be to run Facebook and Instagram ads. So that way you wouldn't have to worry about being on social media. So in-house print on demand is very better because with social media, you can record yourself packing up an order. It's going to go viral. You can go on live. I, I became a millionaire last year just from TikTok alone. No paid advertisements, no nothing just from my account 
posting videos, going live, and that's it. So I definitely recommend for you to do it in-house if you can. So that way you don't, it's a good marketing strategy because somebody may comment and say, I placed an order. Can you make a video packing up my order? And you can reply back to that comment, packing up their order, which will entice other people. Okay, let me go order because I see you can you can do videos with you making a t-shirt or you can talk about t-shirts. But if you give that whole job to Shopify or a printing company to do, then just know that you're gonna, if you want your business to to, to go, you're gonna most likely have to be using Facebook and Instagram ad paid advertisements in order to grow your business. That's very true. And, you know, just me thinking, like, you know, how can people, like, like some practical stuff that people can do to make that happen, like, in terms of getting the shirts to whether it's the heat pressing or vinyl, all the different things to, like, package, like, where where can they go? Mm -hmm. What are some resources available um, that you can share for people to get in touch? So um, I don't know if you if you know that or not, but One T-Shirt Away Empire is my second business we're actually launching on april the 28th which is next friday where we'll be hosting wholesale t-shirts customized transfers so we're actually the franchise that you can come to to get your blank t-shirts to get your transfers from and to be able to start start your business that's, that's what cool. i would say and yeah. you know one question I have, you know, just going back to like the fashion over comparison is how do you maintain customer lo loyalty and retention in a high competitive industry? The loyalty will go behind like customer service, making sure that the, uh, the customers get their orders out in time, making sure that your policies on your website. If you say that you ship five to seven days, make sure that you're shipping, make sure that you have automations turned on your website. So so when people do get their order within about 14 days, they'll receive an email from your company asking for a review, asking for them to send in a review to build up the loyalty. I also would recommend I don't have the app in mind, um, but on Shopify, there are so many different apps that you can put on your website. Just go put a loyalty app on your website so that way people who purchase on your website, they can kind of get reward points so they can probably get a product for free or get a discount when they reach so many rewards. But honestly, just truth be told, being yourself, people want authenticity. Don't act like you got to have makeup on, you got to have your hair cut, you got to be perfect because you, you're you not perfect. People, the, the true loyalty that I teach and that I've learned is people follow your journey. There are people who are still following me today who watch me when I was in a corner of a bedroom just getting started. And they are my loyalty, my most, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars with me. So build up, don't be afraid to show your journey. Don't be afraid to post on social media and show your good, your bad, your ugly. We was just in a building that I spent so much money. I ain't gonna tell you how much money I spent, but we spent so much money, got into a building and the roof started leaking. And we literally just moved into this building like two weeks ago. So I'm able to show my customers that builds loyalty. You know, orders are being shipped out a little bit later. But as long as they know the journey and know that you're human, we're not Amazon Prime where you get your order right on time. You know, so just be yourself. <laughs> be yourself, show up and create outside of the T-shirts, even on your on your social media, outside of just selling T-shirts, create a, a movement. Create some type of group, you know, host like a Facebook group or a Discord group, even if you're, especially if you're doing faith-based. So maybe you're selling a t-shirt, but maybe somebody won't come buy that shirt that say wealth in Christ. But if you created a Discord group and you do prayer every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you got 10,000 people who paying $10 a month to be inside your Discord group, they, you may win them over to buy that shirt once they're inside your community. So you got to understand that sometimes customers don't buy when you first come in, but when you create a community, that builds that loyalty and that trust. So if you're doing prayer calls or girl meets or different groups for organizations that you may want to be attentive to, you may be able to sell your t-shirts better once you create a community versus just putting a shirt on your website and being like, go buy my shirt. 
they don't know nothing about you. So I would kind of balance the two. Create a community at the same time as you're building your t-shirt business. Loyalty. I definitely like that advice. And, you know, one thing that came to mind, you know, while you were there, I want to talk about uh, the challenge that you mentioned, you know, with the building, um, you move into kind of having to have one on your face, your Instagram the other day. It's like, oh, that's really interesting to talk about. Like, uh, what was that like? And how did you, like, even find yourself in that situation where you bought, uh, you rented or uh, got into a warehouse and realizing there was all these different challenges and having to move out so quickly and my lord when i got in the first building the lord told me to go there so he, he told me to go there it was an amazing price we moved in then it started raining then we noticed that there were leaks in the building we got contractors to come out to kind of give us some quotes signed a three-year contract so you can't get out of it you know so i, I kept telling myself and telling the lord you told me to go here so you, you, you better fix it. You sent me here, you know? And I remember, um, after we realized that we couldn't stay there, we started looking for another place, but that wasn't the first place that I looked. That's why it's very important for you to move when God tells you to move. I don't want y'all to get it twisted and think that I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. I sin. I still do stuff. I'm a human being, but I'm very, I listen to the Holy spirit, even in my business. Right? So before I moved to that building, I had originally went to go see a whole nother building that was about $60,000 a month at, out of my budget. I, I looked at that last year. So whenever we got this leak in the building, which happened last month, uh, me and my assistant was now back on Google and LoopNet trying to find warehouses to fit everything in, right? We need at least 15, 20,000 square foot building. So we on GroupNet and I heard the Lord say, go back. And I'm screenshotting companies and getting ready to call people the next day. He said, go back. So I went back to the email that I had originally sent to the company about the building the year before. And I went back and I was like, hey, do y'all still are y'all still the owners of the, the building? They were like, no, we're not the property managers over there anymore. Uh, I'm thinking the Lord is telling me to go back because that building, the price has dropped down and now we can get it. That's what I'm thinking. And they were like, no, we're not the property managers. But they said, what are you looking for? told them what I was looking for. The next day, they found this place. I got into this place. And the company who was on contract for this place, they made more money than me. They had more money in their bank account than I did. So we were in competition. So they were saying the first person who signs a contract wins the deal. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to sign the contract real fast. So I need to win the deal. Then they said, well, we decided to go with the other person um, for many other reasons. Of course, they had millions of dollars in their bank account. I may only have one, you know, so they, they look better on paper than I did the next day. Well, after they told me, no, I didn't care because I just moved into a big old house. I said, I'm going to just use all these rooms and we're going to store inventory. I'm going to just take it back to how it was. I didn't care about nothing. I was like, we just going to go back to how it was when we started three, three years ago. It wasn't, I was going to put the machine in my garage and I was just going to move business. So I was, I was fine with it. The next day, they called me back and they said, you will never believe it. I said, yeah, I will. They said, the people no longer want the building and it's all yours. Thank God. And we, we moved in the next day because I told I said, Lord, now you told me to go back. He told me to go back and he just tested my faith during that whole little three-week process. They, have, they were more qualified to be in this building than I was. And I got here and now we're here. So I share that to tell you all who are listening. It's very important for you to have a listening ear. And it's, it don't have to make sense because it's not supposed to make sense because God doesn't make sense. He's a miracle working God. So he's never going to make sense. But just listen, follow, and trust. And that's what I did. That was good. And I guess, you know, would you say there's any like um, lesson, like practical lesson, you know, in terms of like when you went to move into a warehouse, in terms of like inspections or looking for recommendations you know would you was mm -hmm. there anything you would recommend learn from that experience i would recommend to have an attorney reread re uh contracts before you sign it because i just literally just signed it i didn't have no attorney look at it uh, i would definitely recommend inspection 
to take place. I didn't even recognize any red flags of the company because we didn't have to go through no city inspection. They didn't ask for any uh, insurance for the building. None of that. It was literally just a quick move in. And I was just like, oh, it's easy peasy. But once we got into this new building, everything is ran the professional way. Um, so I would definitely make sure that I would recommend for you guys to make sure you have an attorney to read the contract and get some insurance because things are going to happen, especially if you're going to be inside of a warehouse. Employees may fall. Lord forbid, I hope that it doesn't happen, but you need to have workers comp. You need to have insurance to protect your equipment. Luckily, my hundred thousand dollar equipment wasn't damaged inside of the inside of the rain damage if not then that would have been you know a, a good bit of my multi-million dollar business would have been under the gutter and i would have to wait a couple of months to, for them to reprogram it to fix it back up so definitely have some insurance and have your legal documents in place um if you're going to move into a warehouse okay and just to wrap this conversation and i do have two questions one is uh because just listen it's like we have a system you know, whether it's system is with you creating clothes and releasing it, creating content. Um, what mm -hmm. system do you have? Because it's like, it's a system. I'm getting like you have a system of how you go about different things. You know, what is building out where you have a system, you know, helping you. If you can quickly talk about, you know, three things that people can um, think about including in their system and growing a Christian clothing brand. So what I would advise for you all to do is understand that you can't do it by yourself, but you have to start by yourself. So be willing to start by yourself and get the foundation of what it is that you believe in that God is entrusting you to do. Get it started. Please also understand that you want to make sure that you have some type of a oh, uh, trustworthy website. It's very important to have a website. We utilize Shopify. Shopify is an amazing platform that you can use. You can add in a lot of different systems on Shopify to help you um, prolong and fulfill the orders of your customers. Very easy peasy with just literally one or two buttons. And the third system I would say is honestly just consistency. You're going to have good days, high days, always show up. Always show up and be put into, be willing to put in the work. Yes, I'm the CEO and I'm, I'm at my office every day. I'm not telling you guys that because I like to be in my office every day because I, I, I'm, I'm going through the process of building up the business. So once I get it set in stone, I'm going to be on somebody's boat somewhere, enjoying life and going to Jerusalem and all that good stuff. But in the process, be willing to work. Never stay humble. Stay humble. Um, never look at yourself higher than nobody else. And as long as you're willing to put in the work, pack up orders and do the footwork and build a system, that's that's basically what I've done. I'm hands on in my business. You'll see me pressing shirts. You'll see me folding shirts. You'll see me packing up orders. You'll see me taking out the trash. You'll see me uh, loading up the refrigerator for my employee. So I'm always relevant. So never, never look at yourself bigger than nobody else um, that you want to be on your team. That's good. And my last question, you know, to this interview is about content. Um, I do see a lot of, you know, Christian apparel, you know, with great following across different platform, um, but it's like, yet they still struggle with monetizing. You know, it's just not just good to just pose. Um, so what is that missing factor? Um, Cause you, to lead people to the website because people will see your clothes, they see you pack it. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That looks good, but it never ends up with a purchase or, you know, them going to your website and actually purchase it. And why, I don't know if you can, if you have any, any cool ideas of what that yeah. may be. I do. I'll give y'all a couple of nuggets. Who's listening? Uh, one thing that I would tell you is because you're selling t-shirts or apparel, People really not gonna buy you just with your with you just wearing a shirt. They're gonna buy into your story. That's why I tell you to create a community. It's it's gonna be easier to sell by putting people. You may hit you may get a couple viral videos because you may have a bomb t-shirt or a bomb video that may go viral, but that money in your sleep type of business, it's better to create a movement. And then it'll be easier to sell a product. Some people try to sell a product, but they don't have a community. So you need to build a community so that your product can be can move. So that shirt you have on right now, you can drop that in black. Let's just say you had 5,000 people in your community. Drop it in black. 
You can drop it in red, drop it in orange, drop it in yellow, drop it in green. You can put a football on it when it's instead of that crown, you can put a football on it in, in football season. And you can only sell to your community that you built from social media versus making a video and trying to get random people to buy your shirt. So I strongly suggest build a community and then you give them what they need and just sell to them. That's exactly where it is. That's exactly where I'm at. I don't look to, we're opening up to the public like worldwide, you know, at the in the middle of the year. But right now I sell to my students. I don't sell to to the public. Like I'm I'm a I basically sell to the people who are inside of my t-shirt course, which is over 9,000 people. And I do that every day, all day and on rotation versus me trying to sell to the world. I just provide a product that solves their, I created a t-shirt course, which teaches people how to start their own t-shirt business. I removed all of the vendors from my course. Like I remember you asked me from vendors. I removed them. This is a sidebar. Never do nothing for free. Don't, don't make people feel like because you're a Christian that they should tell you or you should tell them where you get stuff from for free. And they be like, oh, where you get this heat press from? Or oh, you get this shirt from? And then you send them to the company where they got them from and the company makes millions of dollars off of your referral and they don't give you nothing. So mm -hmm. I took away all of the vendors inside of my course because they became millionaires last year. Even though they were already millionaires, but they made a million plus dollars from people who use my link and they didn't give me nothing. So I said, you know what? I'm going to be the vendor. So never feel like you, <laughs> never feel like you got to tell people where you get stuff from because you are Christian, because people use it all the time. Oh, you are Christian. And this is what God tell you to do. Why you can't just give it to me for free? Or why you can't tell me this? No, because I'm not going to let nobody else become rich off of me. You know, so I would tell you to create a community and then solve the problem. So now the community that I created I, they buy wholesale for me and they're fixing to get ready to buy custom transfers. I can care less if nobody else ever even know about one t-shirt away because we going to rotate and flip all this community. So it's a, it's about building a community. That's good. And I want to add, you know, get the opportunity to talk about, you know, where how can people get involved in your community? You know, what can people expect from this course um, and be in part of that community? So I do have a t-shirt course. It's called One T-Shirt Away Startup Course. I have it in 1.0 and also in 2.0. Uh, 1.0 basically teach, teaches you everything step by step. Basically some of the things that we talked about on this, um, on this interview, but it teaches you step by step on how to actually build a t-shirt business by utilizing social media, no paid advertisement, down from coming up with your brand name, how to price your t-shirts, so that way you can make a more profitable margin, how to use Canva to make your designs. I don't even know how you made that design, but I could make that same design in Canva. Um, how to create your own t-shirt mock-ups, how to build up your Shopify website where people will go to purchase from you, give you marketing tips on how to find your target audience, different pain points you should be triggering on, different ways to post on social media, how to post on social media, basically the entire breakdown on how I went from $7.17 to becoming a millionaire right from home is inside of my t-shirt course, literally step by step by step. I then created 2.0 in December of last year um, because now I'm able to provide people information on how to structure your LLC. You want to make sure that you optimize your income so that way you're not utilizing your money all the time. Thank God I never had to take out a PPP loan, which I should have because I could have, but I didn't have no loans, no credit cards. I literally folded my business and funded my business with the money that came in. It funded itself and now we're here. So I show you how to get your LLC so you can get business credit, how to trademark your designs. Um, you still need to have an attorney, but just the information you need to know. Automations, if you don't have automations on your website and you're leaving money on the table, y'all know that money in your sleep money, that's like if you don't have text message automation set up where people come abandoning their cart and they get a text message and say you left something in your cart, I made over $150,000 in just text messaging alone last year uh, with automation. So I'll show you how to set all that stuff up um, inside of my course in my community. And that's it. I do. I am on tour for the year of 2023. I will be announcing the date so y'all can follow me on Instagram at the t-shirt doctor. And I'm on TikTok at 
the t-shirt. Um, I'm on TikTok at t-shirt doctor. Uh, and you guys will be able to see my calendar. I do host prophetic encounters on the road where I give you business all in one day and I give you a whole bunch of Jesus all in the second day. So I do, um, I have been on the road since last year where people come out to a two day conference where they get business in Jesus. So I'm the favorite coach where you get business in Jesus all at the same time. That's good. And you can have like a word of advice, you know, I'm sure people have listened and enjoy your story. Miss Rayante, and they're like, yes, great. You know, you're doing great, but it's just that but. What would you say to that person to encourage them and just to inspire them? I would want you to know that it's not going to get easy. And I'm not going to tell you something that you really want to hear. It's not going to get easy if you're not willing to go through the hard times for it to get comfortable for you. Um, I would encourage you to make sure that you're in it for the right reason. Make sure that your whys are strong enough to keep you in it. Um, when it comes to the butt in business, you're going to have a lot of butts. So if you can't get over this butt that you're in right now, please don't expect to, to get over the next butt that may happen next month. So starting a business, being an entrepreneur, you're going to be hitting the road with a lot of butts, a lot of what ifs, a lot of oops. Um, I owe the IRS, you know, I didn't know anything about taxes and things like that. So it's a lot of things that I didn't understand until I got in the business and you're going to have to get, you know, proper training and CPAs involved and things and that such. But if I would have never, if I would have stopped once the IRS took my money, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So don't try to look for comfortability. Just understand that right now you're a role runner. And for those who are listening, um, you know, I hope this encouraged you. I hope this inspires you. I want to thank you again, Ms. Traytana Gray, for taking time out of your day, you know, to share your story, you know. And I hope those who are listening don't see it as another person coming on the show, sharing your story. But I hope this inspires you. I hope this encourages you to take a step, you know, take that leap of faith um, that she's been talking about through her story. And you're looking for a group of Christians who are working, who is working towards becoming financially free. Look no further and join the Pray Invest group, and I'll see you guys next week.